So, uh, Matt, to begin with, why don't you introduce yourself to us and uh, just tell us a little bit about the work you do. Sure. I'm Matt Silva. I am the owner and founder of Penny Joe from Productions, based out of Atlanta. We're a physical fabrication and conceptual design company. We do everything from uh, drawn illustration all the way to finished product. Uh, we sort of uh, we work mostly in the film and television industry, uh, doing everything, uh, filling art department roles, being be it makeup, hair, costumes, wardrobe, sets, um, and so on and so forth. But uh, we um, we recently, within the last two years, have really gotten the steampunk aesthetic as something to do in our free time, and and has sort of slowly begun uh, kind of actually transferring into some of our film work as well. That's fantastic. So, um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the films you've done recently? Um, and especially if there are any uh, steampunk films that you've worked on or uh, films that you think segue into that genre. Sure. Um, well, most of the people who work in PDP work as uh, individual artists, but uh, our credits our credits include this year, um, let's see, starting from the beginning, um, Big Mama's House 3. Uh, there was an MTV movie called My Super Psycho Sweet 16 that, uh, that's coming out. That we had uh, an art department guy on that. We've also um, uh, did stuff for The Walking Dead, uh, both acting and makeup effects. And uh, we've also done some films with a, a, a boutique film company in Atlanta called Whitestone Motion Pictures. And uh, we've done uh, several films with them, uh, more, the, the more readily recognizable ones uh, being Heartless, the story of the Tin Man, sort of a 20-minute short film about the backstory of the Tin Man. And most recently, Candy Shop, which is a 20-minute short film about the... Uh, the actual tagline is it's it's a fairy tale about the uh, about the sexual exploitation of children. It's sort of um, a social justice film that that's one big metaphor for you know um, the uh, the trafficking of minors. And uh, so, are any of these films uh, steampunk in aesthetic or theme? Definitely. Um, the uh, the heartless was definitely steampunk influenced. We uh, the Tin Man himself was was very. Uh, clockwork, uh, mechanical, um, and some of, the, some of the wardrobe in it was very Victorian-esque, but not, you know, period correct. Um, and then, um, more specifically, Candy Shop is extremely steampunk. It's, uh, it's, it's 1920s, but uh, there's a lot of antiquated uh, technology still around, like, you know, maybe the 1920s, but they're still using things from 10, 20, 30 years ago. And um, there's a, a particular set in Candy Shop that is uh, the Candy Shop owner's basement, which is this giant machine that turns children into candy. And uh, it's one giant 360 steampunk room. So uh, that, that's definitely um, something that's been influenced by steampunk in our films. And uh, how did you get into uh, using steampunk aesthetic and uh, conceptual themes in your work? Um, well, I started out doing steampunk as a hobby. Uh, that's a very long, long tale. But uh, um, basically, doing it as a hobby, a lot of people see the stuff we did and wanted it in film. So it kind of just naturally leaked in, if that kind of answers. And uh, so... And obviously you've worked on, on some very uh, significant projects. Um, have you worked with any, uh, you know, big name stars, people who, uh, you know, the, the general public would be familiar with? Sure. Actually, Candy Shop was starring Doug Jones, who most people don't know by face, but recognize him as uh, Abe Sapien or Pan from Pan's Labyrinth. He's a very, uh, very famous makeup uh, actor. Um, he... Um, he played the candy shop owner. He was uh, fantastic. Pro he's uh, one of my lifelong heroes and, uh, and actually a very genuinely awesome person. And uh, he's one of the bigger ones. Uh, um, most of the time I end up working with uh, around uh, around famous people but not with them. Uh, for example, on The Walking Dead, you know, working next to Frank Darabont. But, uh, you know, well, he directs and I do makeup, so generally we don't really have much interaction. You know, I, if, if there's going to be something like that, it happens between my department head. But um, definitely, I've gotten to meet a lot of, of people. I've met uh, Rob Zombie and, and uh, Tyler Maine, who played, uh, uh, oh goodness, he was the uh, Sabretooth in X-Men. Um, but, uh, you know, I definitely worked with a lot of, a lot of you know, actors, and I mean, for the most part, they're all normal people, and they're super awesome, and they've got, you know, they're just, they're just normal people with extraordinary jobs. So, uh, you know, Pain Dreadful Productions, which you run, is a fabrication company. Um, what would you say was the, the most interesting or challenging piece that you've uh, had to produce for someone? Um, 
the the thing that pushes most, and we keep going back to this, is probably Candy Shop. Uh, for PDP specifically, um, Candy Shop marked the first time that we had our hands completely on an entire film, not just doing just hair or just makeup, but uh, we were able to fill almost every single art department role. Um, it was probably the most stressful thing I've ever done in my entire life, um, but it was the biggest learning curve, the the, the sort of breakthrough point in the we can really do this. So now, now that we're done, uh, it looking back, it's, it's definitely the thing I've learned the most from, and it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. And uh, since, of course, you do uh, private commissions, um, have you done any steampunk-themed private commissions? Um, yes. We, I mean, we get a couple things for... Uh, we, we do these cute little dirigible doll guys. Uh, then we get commissions to do... Um, you know, various steampunk uh, figures like the Apney Park people or, you know, or, or steampunk versions of other characters and these little dolls. But we've also had large costume orders like um, Steampunk Boba Fett. Um, we've, and we've had smaller ones like uh, people who want to do, uh, you know, like a Captain Nemo costume or they want to do like some sort of admiral or, or a general or some sort. And um, But uh, we, it wasn't really a commission, but we just finished... Um, sort of display piece we just did a, a steampunk iron man uh which was which was really cool and actually um uh it was very well received here in new york comic con which we're just wrapping up this weekend so uh, if people want to learn more about uh, yourself or about your work about pdp or are interested in getting commissions from you guys um what uh, what should they do where should they go uh they can visit us online uh they can email us or they can check us out at our website at get dreadful.com and they can email us at matt at getdreadful.com all right well thank you very much for your time matt it has been a pleasure thank you uh, do you have any closing words you'd like to say to everyone um, yeah i think so um despite whatever anybody does in the steampunk world i think it's important to always be inspired and uh I think the only thing that ever keeps any of us going is to is to look out and see what's going on in the world and to, to look at it positively and just keep moving on it and just kind of use the inspiration to, to push through. So I, I guess it's kind of a closing comment. Yeah, those are definitely words to live by. Thank you, Matt. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.